Hello and welcome to this edition of NewsPod for In the Hyperloop. First, let's talk about Hyperloop UPV. They're re-posting um, photos of their pod turn, which means water. Um, they're on their way across the pond, as are a couple other Hyperloop pod competition teams. Um, but we look forward to seeing them at SpaceX. Next is EPF Loop. Um, they presented their pods to Credit Suisse's executive board and um, two professors came to support their team and it's just kind of a cool um, thank you to the sponsors of their pod competition team. Um, Tum Hyperloop um, from Germany is finally off. They're launching half their team to Los Angeles to receive their pod that's being shipped and um, start final preparations and set up a workshop that they're gonna use for final tweaking. So good job and safe travels. Um, Swiss Loop, um, they shipped their pod, Claude Nicolaire. Um, thank you to their sponsors um, for the transportation logistics. And it's always really tough shipping these pods. Um, and it looks like it was successful. So safe travels, Claude. Um, uh, actual company that's building Hyperloop uh, tubes called Eurotube released a uh, tweet. Um, fine-tuning the design and scale of our tubes for mass production of their alpha tube and we can see um, they have kind of a mold that all of this um, cement or concrete mixture is going into and they have like rebar or something we're not really too sure um, but this is what it looks like after it cures um, and the diameter is kind of small and this is their alpha tube and if we look over here, um, we can see an Instagram um, post, beta shell production. And uh, what material is our beta shell made out of? I'm gonna say concrete. Well, I can't click it, <laughs> but I don't know. Um, and then just other uh, photos from the concrete factory that they're at um, producing this test. And um, first beta shell two babies were born and a little wrench, that's fun. So check out and follow Eurotube, give them support for building the actual infrastructure that um, vacuum transportation will occur in. Next, um, I just wanted to mention that Hyper Poland is working very hard on funding and promoting their technology. And again, Hyper Poland is a phased um, Hyperloop system. So first they're gonna put their pod on actual rail tracks um, and then they'll put kind of a middle rail in between the, the main rails, which will be magnetic levitation. So they're augmenting and then fully uh, hyperloop um, in the future with a tube over the track. So they're really trying to get um, kind of a phased approach to hyperloop adoption on current rail lines. And they're hiring a mechanical engineer, production specialist, senior specialist in electronic power, electronics, electronics, uh, industry expert for track surface and engineering facilities, um, the programmer for embedded systems and industry expert on rolling stock like trains. So um, congratulations, these were all released July 1st and um, apply to Hyper Poland. Um, next, uh, going back to another company, um, Zelleros, they had their first industrial and technical working group on Hyperloop standardization. The event was held in cooperation with Ra Railway Innovation Hub at the Center for Railway Technologies um, with 15 industrial leaders. And the objective of this group is to establish a powerful link between the standardization discussions at European level and Spanish level, strengthening Spain's contribution at industrial levels um, to the development of Hyperloop. So thanks for all of these people that participated, uh, Schindler Electric, uh, university and research groups and I'm not familiar with these other groups but that's great congratulations Zelleros for really pushing the real world adoption and standardization uh, that I think Hyperloop will need in the future so um, good job um, going back to Delft Hyperloop unfortunately this is out of order but um, they have shipped their pod and are traveling to the United States some of the team members um, have already arrived. Atlas 2 is being shipped. And um, yeah, it's, it's getting real. And uh, safe travels to their Atlas 2 and they've arrived at US border in Los Angeles. Congratulations. And next, we're going to a Hyperloop 1 um, a 
feasibility and now um, implementation uh, for Missouri. Um, a group of Missouri elected officials uh, want to continue to study how fast um, to construct a potential Hyperloop loop. loop. Um, they want to do it from St. Louis to Kansas and they estimate it it's going to be um, about $10 billion to do and there would be another stop in um, along the route uh, for universities um, and that route normally it takes uh, many many hours um, but it would take 28 minutes and they want to build a kind of a test track a certification track as they say uh, 12 to 15 miles um, would be the next route and then if they can build that certification route people will see um, and they can get investors uh, more on board and they really stress that it would be funded largely through private donations and um, you know that's kind of what they're pitching um, we see that Andrew Smith says that it's going to be about 40% less than high-speed rail and three times faster um, and the ticket prices would be less than a tank of gas to travel that distance right now um, so good job we've seen a lot of press coming out about this um, including um, a Slate article, Hyperloop has taken a detour, was supposed to, um, you know, be the future, now it's barring ideas from the past. Um, really, I think the main crux of this article is that the, the renders and the photos that we saw in Elon Musk's white paper are kind of more of like toboggans and very small, but then, you know, Transpod uh, and, you know, Hyperloop TT um, are having like these massive train size 60 plus or you know passenger cabins and so like you know what's the difference between that and you know it really does outline a very uh, different projects of the hyperloop but um you know it's a lot of information out there for the general public to read and there's a lot of kind of misconceptions and it's evolving all the time um and so it's going to be interesting in how this gets built next um hyperloop one is working with uh, different school groups and STEM outreach uh, to teach um, students about vacuum chambers and magnetic levitation. So that's great. Um, and then uh, Elon Musk tweeted or liked a article that was posted, and this is the article: um, the need for speed to compete in Elon Musk Hyperloop Pod competition. Um, the University UNSW um, in Australia is building their pod. And you know they're really excited because they're the only Australian team um, to go. And there is this brief video, which we'll just check out real quick. Um, and they're really kind of interested about Hyperloop in Australia. And unfortunately, my video is not really working right now, but um, we'll just listen. The instances of that was uh, to create the Hyperloop pod competition. And that's where the students come in. What sets us apart from a lot of other teams is that this is our first year. UNSW Hyperloop was established in August last year, August, September last year. And with that, we have been working super hard over this time to make sure that everything's manufactured. And mechanic. Yeah, um, so congratulations. They're getting a lot of great press um, and um, looking forward to meeting them at SpaceX. Um, next, oh, that's it, actually. <laughs> so thanks for uh, tuning in to this edition of In the Hyperloop. Let us know what you think and if there's anything else uh, we can do differently, but um, stay in the loop. <laughs>